alone. All right. For review, let's turn to Romans 2.16 and read it. Let's turn to Romans 2.16 and read it. One of the things, brothers and sisters, that I'm asking God to do, and, and especially right along now, is help me to go very slow with this because we didn't get as stuck in Europe as we are overnight. You follow what I'm saying? So we're not about to come out of it overnight. But if you can see for yourself the evidence of the program of Euro-Gentile theology, then I'm sure of, of your own, on your own accord, you will do the inevitable. Romans 2.16, if you have a say, I'll say. It says, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to whose gospel? Right, he says it plainly right there, according to his gospel. Look at the end of that book, to the 16th chapter, the 25th verse. Romans 16:25. When you have it, say, I say. It says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to whose gospel? All right, now. I see some of y'all don't have a Bible. Who does not have a Bible? Okay, because y'all need a Bible. When y'all come to Bible study, you got to have a Bible. Uh, let me see if we got it. Any extra Bibles around here? A Bible, somebody can share the Bible with our guests who don't have a Bible. Because, see, if y'all don't see it, all you have to do is you sit there and take my word for it. And I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to see it for yourself. Okay. Let's read that verse again, Romans 16, 25. Now to him, yes, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. All right? And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. And notice his audacity. He's saying here that I am now teaching a secret that nobody else in the last 75,000 years knew except him. Now, you know that's deep. That's what you, my grandmother would have called it gall. <laughs> now, that's some gall to make a statement like that. Okay, let's turn to 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Now, this one's going to rock you a little bit. 2 Timothy 2 and 8. All right, Timothy is... Uh, just after Thessalonians and just before Hebrews, just before Titus. Second Timothy 2 and 8. When you have it, say, I'll say. I'm going to start at the seventh verse. It says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. In other words, I want you to give some thought to what I'm saying, Timothy. And the Lord give you understanding in all things. Now notice in the eighth verse, he says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, what? According to his gospel. Please, you need to understand this. The whole concept of Jesus being raised from the dead was not even preached until this guy came along and started preaching that. Okay? Yeah, buddy. But then again, you know, well, well, we'll cover that tonight. All right. And 2 Corinthians 12, 16. Go back some to 2 Corinthians. We read a very powerful sentence here. In 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 16th verse. Notice what it says. 2 Corinthians 12, 16. When you have it, say, Ashe. Here's what the Bible says. But be it so, I did not burden you. Now, check this out, people. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Ain't that deep? Nevertheless, being crafty, 
I caught you with guile. Another word for guile is deception or trickery. Thank you. Exactly. So he's saying, being crafty, I made y'all believe what I wanted you to believe with trickery, with deception, with guile. It's deep. That's deep. Now, what's really awesome is all of the stuff that he wrote that makes up that guile and trickery is now doctrine in the Christian church. Okay? Notice what I have on your paper. Note, it is very important to understand the underlying purpose of the Pauline epistles. I'll say that again, people. It is important to understand the underlying purpose of the Pauline epistles in the Bible. That is, and what's that purpose? That the Gentiles do not have to keep God's laws to be justified or put in right standing with God, but their, quote, faith literally causes them to become heirs of the promise that God made to Abraham. Okay? That is the underlying theme of Paul's writings. Okay? Now, in the Pauline epistles, we have several doctrines, and we'll get to cover them over the next couple of weeks. But we're going to cover pretty much just a synopsis of two of them tonight. The first one is called homardiology, all right, or sin, the doctrine of sin. Uh, the word harmatia is the Greek word for our English word sin, okay? And, of course, whenever you see ology at the end of a word, it means the study of, okay? So when we talk homardiology, we're saying the study of sin, okay? Another doctrine that Paul... Uh, fabricated is what is called the doctrine of soteriology. The Greek word soteria is our English word salvation. So soteriology means what? The study of salvation. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, there are other doctrines that he came up with. Ecclesiology, meaning the church, the study of the church. Eschatology, meaning the study of the future, things to come. Satanology, the study of Satan, all right? Uh, anthropology, the study of man, okay? Uh, and it goes on and on and on, all right? And we'll cover these in the next few weeks. But right now, let's focus on the two primary and major doctrines that is covered in the Christian church. Let's start with the first one, which again is the doctrine of homardiology or sin. Under the doctrine of sin, there are two basic subjects. One is called total depravity, and the other is called original sin. By total depravity, we mean that there is nothing good in us to commend us to a holy and just God. Now, if you notice, I have that in quotation marks, okay? And that's because I took that out of their book. When I say there's nothing good in us, I am not talking about black African people. Okay, please understand that. I'm quoting what the European theologians stated, okay, according to their dictionary of theology. And I agree with them. Oh, I do agree with them. See, but the problem that we are facing, people, is we have taken on what the Bible says about the Europeans. Because the Europeans were our teachers. Europeans were our slave masters. You see what I'm saying? And so we must, uh, must understand what the Bible says about them. Now, what is, again, total depravity? Total depravity means that there's not one iota of good in you. Okay? And we sing stuff like that in songs. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You see what I'm saying? Y'all know we love that song. Now. Y'all know we do. You know, some of y'all are starting not to like it now that you're understanding. You see what I'm saying? But that song has set some of y'all on fire in the past. You know? Amazing grace. 